Why? Hello and welcome everybody. So today I wanted to go ahead and bring you guys the most complicated build I have ever played in Path of Exile. So before I go over and explain too much about the character, I would like to say, as weird as this character looks, we are level 93, we have done uh, almost all Guardians, we've done Shaper, we've only had three deaths, and every single one of them was to the leveling phase of this character and the transitioning phase, so no deaths have actually happened in maps yet. Um, so, with that being said, I'm going to peek open my skill tree, I want you guys to figure out what style or what my build is, and then I'm going to go run a map, and then I'm going to have a debriefing section where we essentially explain it. Um, as intimidating as this looks, it's actually not that expensive of a build. It's just really weird and really unique uh, and takes 11 keystones on the overall. Although a lot of them are voided, it takes 11. Okay, with that being said, we're going to just go jump right into a T16. I got a T16 Caldera here. And of course, this wouldn't be one of my certified builds if it didn't run <clears throat> Righteous Fire. Will this be a second loss in a slave? Second loss. Was tanking stuff and uh, got. Got kicked out because of ruin by this asshole. Oh, Arcane Cloak, that's a nice level up. Lightning descends. Vengeance is cold indeed. Choking vapors seek the living. The clearing on this character? Is actually incredible and I could make the clear feel even better um, by switching my quality with orb of storms but I have it set up more for single target right now contamination moves swiftly on the wind the storm comes swiftly Amiga turnaround. That sucks, didn't have the essence. It's okay. <clears throat> Corruption essence, that's what I needed. And the single target. Not too bad for T16, not too bad. Okay, so let's actually explain some of the mechanics, all of the mechanics of the build. So, <clears throat> the original theory craft behind this, it was a Mahoxawaddle Machination Steel Shield with Doriani's prototype. So Doriani's prototype states, nearby enemies have lightning resistance equal to yours. So we run negative 76% lightning res. However, we don't take lightning damage or cold damage, including degen. Already tested, we've done shaper. I don't take any cold degen. So let's break down some stuff here. 
Corrupted Soul doesn't work for us. Eternal Youth uh, kind of works for us, but not really. Everlasting Sacrifice is useless for us. Doesn't work. And Immortal Ambition gives us Overleech, which is kind of cool. And then we get Volpact, which doubles our Leech, but then gets halved by Eternal Youth. So we basically just get Overleech. Divine Flesh, however, is very good, because Divine Flesh gives 50% of Ellie damage taken as Chaos with 5 max Chaos res. So essentially, this shield gives me Divine Flesh with Overleech. Now, if you properly min-max a uh, Petrified Blood, you can get Overleech from it as well. Ours is not set up properly and is very difficult to, so we're still getting Overleech, even though our Petrified Blood is not in the Overleech range. Okay. With that being said, when you run Tempered by War with the Muhaxawal Machination Shield, you literally do not take Cold or Lightning damage. It is not a thing. So, with this instance, we stack as much negative Lightning Res as we can, yet we still don't want to be like a meme that just gets one-shot by everything, so we have to run Tempered by War via Lethal Pride. Example, if I remove it, I go to negative, like, 152, because of the way the less resistance works, right? So before people start posting, like, how come you're not using this and this and this, you can't stack all these different less modifiers. It will just give you lightning res when you are negative, right? So just, just to get that out of there. The nice thing is, I don't have to worry about cold res. Don't have to worry about uh, lightning res. The bad thing is, I do have to worry about all res, because all res gives me lightning res, which reduces my damage. So it's a weird trade-off, right? So... Let's move on to the next step. Doriani's Prototype. Nearby enemies have lightning resistance equal to yours. This means whether you're fighting a level 1 mob on Twilight Strand, or you're fighting Awakener of Worlds, you know, Mr. Sirius or Cyrus, you do the exact same damage because mobs have your resistance. This means you cannot use things like Ellie Equilibrium, you cannot use Exposure, um, you cannot use things that reduce enemy res. You cannot use conductivity unless you're conductivity in your own face, in which case you're lowering your right lightning res, which then increases the damage you deal because mobs match your lightning res, right? Makes sense? On the flip side, when you run map mods with Ellie Equilibrium and monster res, it literally does nothing. When you roll, monsters have increased and, in, you know, gain endurance charges, it doesn't matter because they have to match your lightning res. So it goes both ways, right? Pretty interesting. All right. So, the basic mechanics of that are explained. With that being said, I would like to move on to my Venter's Gambles. I'm pretty sure Venter's Gamble is not best in slot for this build, since it is a mana stacker. However, it is a really interesting piece of gear to use, because it has a life roll, a sick fire res roll, negative lightning res, which is sick for us because it gives us damage, and we get quantity! So, running two Venter's Gambles, I have 19% quantity, which is awesome! So that's, that's pretty cool to think of. I, I've never really gotten to use Venter's Gambles before, so that's the main reason why I wanted to run these. Mana stacking rings will most likely be better, but I'll have to POB it to get the actual numbers. Then we run a Adziri's Foible, because Adziri's Foible is amazing. We have dex requirement issues, so this helps a ton. Adziri's Foible is awesome for mana builds. Skyforth. Skyforth gives us reduced reservation of skills, which is fantastic for our uh, Petrified Blood along with making it so we have no life regen, which we have already countered, which we'll get into the next step after. And stun threshold is based on 500% of your mana instead of life. I have not gotten stunned on this character yet. So they're fantastic for us. Moving on to the next part, Agnostic. Agnostic is not considered life regeneration. It is considered life recovery. What this means is you can actually sustain everything off of Agnostic. So... I run Righteous Fire on Agnostic, I can run Blood Rage on Agnostic, I can have Insane Degen on my Agnostic, run around with Crazy Bleeds, because as long as I can sustain the mana cost, which I can sustain no problem, as long as I'm fighting, because as long as I have Arcane Surge, look at my mana pool, it's fine. Arcane Surge is always on, it's just when I'm standing still explaining, I don't have Arcane Surge, so I degen naturally. Okay, moving into the next part, let's start moving our tree up and go over the Keystones. Mind Over Matter is, you know, a natural pick, <clears throat> as we are a Mind Over Matter build without um, Cloak of Defiance. 
So the Hierophant comes in handy here by giving us Divine Guidance, so our Mana Nodes give us uh, essentially damage at 30% value, while still giving us damage for Archmage, then getting an additional 10% damage taken from Mana, then also running a Watcher's Eye for physical dam or, uh, damage taken from Mana before life. So our 49% Mind Over Matter conversion right now. Could get 50, but I'd have to divine this, I don't feel like it. I also have Permanent Ailment Immunity and Leech from Illuminated Devotion, which is always on because we have Arcane Search. Now, it's important to note, you can play literally any spell in the game with my template that I'm using. I was originally running Ball Lightning, previously Arc, but I've decided to switch on to my current setup, which we'll go over. So, moving forward, naturally we're going to take Ellie Overload, as we're a non-crit build that deals heavy elemental damage. Now for the more enjoyable one. Pain Attunement. So, someone suggested running Petrified Blood, but I thought to myself, my build doesn't really have much life. Using a standard Petrified Blood is literally just going to make me die, because my one-hit potential just goes lower, meaning I have less effective life against a one-hit. If you notice, I'm running an Anomalous Petrified Blood with 44% quality. What this does is it makes it so, <clears throat> when taking damage from hits... See how it says 45? It normally would say 40. In here, though, 51% of life lost below half-life is prevented. So if you know anything about math, 51% is better than 50, meaning my one-hit one potential goes up, aka I can survive a stronger one-hit. The downside, I take extreme degen. Then 214% life loss prevented is lost over 4 seconds. But degen is not a problem, because we run agnostic. I have literally not have a degen, kill me yet. A shaper beam I couldn't face tank, with better gear I could face tank, but that's not really a hit that degens, that's a straight up degen. So with this setup, I have to run Petrified Blood Reduced Reservation with a level 4 Enhance and an Anomalous Arrogance for this, with an Enlighten as well. The trade-off is, I get permanent pain attunement. Another con is... If you notice here, my mana is permanently draining. That is because if you are running Petrified Blood with, um, if you are running Petrified Blood with Agnostic, you permanently degen. Not, you don't permanently degen, but it triggers Agnostic to be permanently on because Agnostic is trying to heal my life pool, but it cannot heal my life pool because of the way Petrified Blood works. Make sense? A little complicated. If you can sustain it, then you are essentially getting pain attunement. So that's where the trade-off comes in. Okay, good. Moving into the next part. We use a pure talent located right here. Pure talent is insane because it gives us all attributes which we need. Dex is a problem. 5% pen from Templar. And which is 0.5 mana regen, which is scaled through mana, uh, essentially mana increased uh, mana regeneration. There we go. The maximum mana regen is scaled with increased mana regeneration. However, the way I get it is interesting. I didn't know this, but you can use a Thread of Hope to allocate a class's starting node to trigger the pure talent. I had no clue that was a thing, but it is a thing, which is really cool. Now for the, op or the question of why am I running three Threads of Hope? Well, Thread of Hope with minus 20 Ellie res is extremely cheap and nobody wants them. But with Doriani's prototype with Tempered by War, the minus 20 all res turns into minus 10 fire res, minus 10... Well, actually, no, it's still minus 20 fire res, but it's minus 10 um, lightning res. And I get one pen, which is like 11 lightning res. And you can allocate, even if you just allocate one node, it's still an insane jewel, I promise you. It's nuts. So in the setup over here, you can see we're also running a Thread of Hope here to connect to Divine Judgment and to connect to Arcane Capacitor and this little Arcane Surge node. Then we run a very large Thread of Hope here, which I've just recently introduced. So I get Harrier. I have Drop Blood Rage for Overcharge, Finesse, or sorry, Coordination, and Blood Siphon. And if you wanted to do a gimmick with, like, Intensify... You have intensity here for one maximum intensity, which is really nice as well. So, 
Some future crafting projects that I have to go into is um, I have an exposure helm here, which I don't care about, but it's minus 10 all res, which is basically like five pen. So this is a sick base to craft on. I'm just using this right now, which I is not really very good, right? But it's what I've got. So my skill that I use for damage, this is where this comes in pretty, pretty interesting. I've never tried this setup before, but I was curious to know because a lot of people are playing it right now. So I decided to use it. It's basically Orb of Storms and Spam Casting Tempest Shield. So I don't have a very optimized setup right now for this. I'm just going to switch scene here. So basically, Tempest Shield, what it does is, it has a very low base cast time and can be scaled to even further lower cast time. You can use Essence of Insanity Gloves for 16% more cast speed, which I would like to do, but I have really good gloves that are hard to replace right now. So you basically drop an Orb of Storms which takes a ton of mana, but then you constantly re-trigger the Orb of Storms with the Tempest Shield. So this is where the actual damage and single target damage comes from. I could run a Sigil on top of this, a Sigil of Power, but Sigil of Power is really annoying to use. It's just too many buttons for me to click already because I have to drop an Orb of Storms then I need to drop a Hydrosphere because what happens here is you basically, so if you look, you can ricochet to the Hydrosphere and then you can ricochet to the enemy, right? And then I think it can bounce again, right? So you can basically chain bounce between the Hydrosphere and the target. It's really annoying and really convoluted, but you're rewarded immensely for having crazy high damage if you do it properly. That is pretty much the overall rundown of the build and how most of the mechanics work i think i've explained pretty much everything um there is pro oh no i didn't there's one more i have a cluster jewel setup here and the main reason for the cluster jewel setup is disorienting display gives a 10 percent chance to blind nearby enemies when you use an elemental skill with tempest shield that's permanent you, you cast it, and you just blind the whole screen all the time. Always. It's so awesome. And then I run two Born to Chaos, which gives me six max Chaos res, which puts us at 86% Chaos, which is important because 50% of each element hits my Chaos, and 50% of my Cold and Lightning hits my Fire, which is irrelevant to that, but that's just something else I wanted to explain. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. Um, I hope you guys have had a wonderful time. I hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. If you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. Let me know what the most complicated build is that you've ever played, because this is by far the most complicated build that I've ever played. Um, but it's really interesting. It's 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 definitely uh, it's definitely interesting. Oh yeah, sorry. And then I use one healthy mind here because it gives me so much effective mana. Um, so we transform. All of these modifiers. I know this gives Ellie res, but it gives so much mana. So mana, 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 and then mana, mana, and then mana. And then I get a nice little triple, almost triple overlap on them. Would be cool if there was a weird interaction where anything in this triangle had massive increased effect because it's in the middle of all the circles. That would actually be so interesting. Anyway, though, that's pretty much about it. So hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. If you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to catch me streaming live every day, but Sundays at twitch.tv slash pox. Take care. See you guys all tomorrow.